without scarcity. Think about that. Bread without scarcity. Don't, don't eat two pieces, just eat one. Did everybody get one piece? Because it's got to last us all week. No, bread without scarcity. He said, in, in which you will lack nothing. A land, now watch this, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. If you're taking notes, put this down. He's saying this, everything that I need to fulfill the promise is within the land of promise. Write that down if you're writing notes. Everything that I need, somebody say it after me, everything that I need to fulfill the promise. How many of you are people of promise? You know that God has given you a promise. God has given you a promise, and he's not going to back out on the promise. God is not going to run out of money midway. God is not going to say, well, I don't know what we need to do. You know, this fiscal year didn't turn out right. No, he already gave you the land. He gave you the promise. But, but, but it's in the land. Those of you who know a couple of years ago, several years ago, I preached a message of the, the land of beehives and cows, cows and beehives. Because I used to always think that there was the land of milk and honey. And I, like a foolish city person, thought that you just go to the store and get, you know, a carton of milk and a bottle of honey. I was like, they're going to the land with these corner stores, and all they got to do is get a carton of milk and a bottle of honey. And God was saying, no, no, I'm taking you to a land full of cows and beehives. And you go into the land, and all you see is cows and beehives, and now you got an attitude. Now you having a fit. God, all I see is cows and beehives. Look at all this mess I'm stepping into. Look at how many times I'm getting stung. And God said, you don't understand. It's cows and beehives because that's where the milk and the honey is at. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody has just stepped. You got up this morning and got into an argument, stepping into some stuff with some cows, and you were thinking you was getting milk. You don't know how to work the cow yet. Look at somebody and say, work that cow. Work that cow. You better know. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! God have mercy. I got I to gotta understand how to navigate the beehives so I can get the honey out of the hive. The honey was not meant to sting me. The honey was meant to bless me. But if I don't know how to work the honey, okay, let's, let's, let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Verse 10, verse 10, he said this, when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Ah, here we go, though. here we go. He says, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God. And look how he says how you end up forgetting him. He says, by not keeping his commandments. You, you, you forget God by not keeping his judgments. You end up judging it your own way. You end up saying, you know, this is my, I'm king of this castle, and what I say is the command, this is how it going to go in my crib. I'm King Kong up in this. <laughs> Look at how he says you forget God. He said you end up forgetting God by not keeping his statues. which I command you this day. If you're taking notes, sidebar note, Israel's sin, the, the, the true sin of Israel, wasn't that they forgot God in premise. <sighs> oh, they were very religious. They kept all the festivals. The festival's a day off. What you talking about? I'm going to keep the festival. That's my day off. I get to go on and party. I get to go on and get drunk. I get to do what I want to do because they drunk wine back in that day. Oh, oh yeah. I get to do what I want to do. I ain't going to forget. No, they didn't forget him in premise. They forgot him in, help me out. They forgot him in practice. They 
forgot him in practice. They forgot him in the everyday, the day-to-day, the small, minuscule things. They forgot him in the nasty little habits. Help me out. Preach it for me. The nasty little habits. Little things. Little things. That they forgot to say, God, what do you think about that? Statues. That's what statues mean. In other words, my certain level. This is my statue. This is my limit. See, you, you, you will live at your sense of statue. At your sense of what is the limit. What is the level? This is my statue. This is how I live, and you won't settle for anything else. If you want to raise your level of living, raise your statue up. And if you really want it right, raise it to God's standard in His statue. <sighs> Verse twelve. Let's keep on going. Keep going. He said, less when you have eaten. I love this. I want you to picture it in your mind. Picture the word picture that Jesus, that God brings here through Moses. Less when you have eaten. Mm. You ever been around somebody that just eat with the mouth open just like a cow, just See what I'm saying? When, when, I, man, when I was down tough and they just spitting all the time. I was, I was, I, just look at somebody say, nasty little habits. Nasty little habits. And look what it says. You're eating and you're full. Burp. Burp. Other bodily noises. Burp. Look at somebody say, nasty little habits, nasty little habits, nasty little habits. He said, at least when you're eating and you're full and you built your houses that you dwell in them. And when you, your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold are multiplied and all that you have is multiplied when your heart is lifted up. And you forgot the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land from the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought you or brought water to you out of a flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your forefathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you. Why did he do it? To do you good in the end. In the midst of this warning, write down one more side note, one more side note. In the midst of this warning, I want to give you one more side note, and that is this, is that whatever I'm going through right now, its end is to my good. That's gospel right there. I know I'm in the middle of the warning, but I just got to take a praise break right there. Can I take a praise break and encourage you? I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that whatever you're going through in the end is for your good. In the end is for your good. In the end is for your good. It's to bless you. It's to make you better. It's to make you stronger. It's not going to kill you. It's going to keep you. He said, back to the warning, back to the warning. (coughs) Verse 17, he said, then you will say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth. This is a verse we all know very well. Verse 18, let's all read it together. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Say that again. Let's say it again. And you shall. See if you can say it with your eyes closed. If you may don't memorize it, just, just kind of peek at it and listen. But try to close your eyes and say it. Let's say it one more time. And you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto his forefathers, or to your forefathers this day. Then it shall be if by any means you forget the Lord your God and follow the gods and serve them and worship them. 
I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. And how are you going to perish? You're going to perish just as the nations which the Lord destroys before you. So shall you perish because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Somebody help me out and say nasty little habits. It was the habits. It was the nasty little habits that we know in the scripture as we go through and we realize that this is what really kept Israel out of occupying the land fully and fully coming into the fullness of the promise. And, And God allowed it to happen that way so we could all take a look at Israel and realize that they are just a tithe of humanity. They're just an example, an end sample of what all of us are like. All of us here have a promise or you would not be here. I'm going to say that again. All of us have a promise or God would have taken you out. If your time is up, God will take you out. But because you can breathe, that's why it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Because the fact that you can breathe means that you still have purpose here, that you still have something great to do, that you have something great to be, and you have a legacy. But it's the habits. It's the habits, it's the habits, it's the idea of the habits. And and see, I want to talk to the difference between habits and rituals. See, there's a difference between habits and rituals. Habits are those things that happen and they just happen. It's just a habit. Little things, you know, little things you do. You you, you don't even recognize you're doing it. You just do it. Okay, I'm going to tell it. Can I tell it? Can I I tell it, baby? Then, like, what you going to tell? Okay, I'm going to tell y'all. I'm going to tell on me. I'm going to tell about me. I'm going to tell a quick, quick, just quick story. I got to tell it real quick. It had to be about when Asia was just born, so we were probably married about four years, maybe four, maybe five. I, we were out and we were doing ministry. We were out on a ministry venture, and we were working in a big ministry, and we were excited about it and all that. And there was this one sister that always used to, like, try to push up on a brother. I ain't going to say no names. I ain't going to say no names. But it was this one sister that used to always try to push up and, you know, and, and she'd do it so sly and so slick that if you call her out on it, she was like, what you talking about? You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody say nasty little habits, nasty little habits, nasty. And I remember we were at the hotel, we were at the hotel, and Dean and I, we got into the car, and these people were picking us up, and these were nice people, and, you know, people that had a little something, you know, and they were ready, we were about to do ministry, and we were about to go and preach here and go minister, and it was nice. And, and I remember this sister, she later, uh, me and Dean got in the car, and then she was going, they was going to get, this other group was going to get in another car, and she came out of the hotel as well, out of their own room, and when she came out, she kind of had something on. You won't go to church in that? You know, that, that, that. Somebody say nasty little habits. Nasty little habits. Just. And, and when she did it, I was tired and I was just, you know, I was, my mind wasn't even, I wouldn't even know what I was thinking. And all of a sudden, and, and I remember seeing her and I saw her and I looked and I was just, look, I was fixated. I was caught. I was. And let me tell you, I, I love the, the, the fervor in the. The, the aesthetic of the African-American female because because cause my wife just called me out right in the middle. I didn't even remember. You remember that? Do you remember it? I was, lo- I was looking and I was just. And I remember Dan saying, what you looking at? What you looking at? And I was like, oh, baby, baby, we got them. They picking us up and we're about to go do ministry. Don't go hood on me right now, please. Don't go hood on me right now. She's like, no, what you looking at? I was like, what, what, what you thought that I was trying to come out of it? You know, I'm trying to go, what, what you talking about? No, no, I saw you, what you looking at? What you looking at? <laughs> I couldn't get out of it. I just said, the wrong thing. I'm looking at the wrong. <laughs> you remember that? She, boy, she tightened me up. She tightened me up. I, somebody say nasty little habits. Nasty. Little habits. See, the problem with habits is they happen, you don't even recognize they happen. They just happen. But the difference with rituals is that they happen because you make them happen. They happen because you do them on purpose. You mean to do them because they are more important to you and because they are for a higher cause. See, I can look around you and I can tell you about your rituals by looking at you. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. I can look at you and I can tell your rituals. 
some of y'all that just got all that, you know, you just all worked out. You just walk around just like that. You just got all that six-pack, boop, 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 all that 